So, okay, so guys, in this uh, next tutorial, we're going to learn how to animate that P bar that we made in the last one. Uh, so this is After Effects. Uh, if your work starting off, if your workspace doesn't look like this, um, you can just reset it. So all you do is click Window, Workspace, uh, and you want to choose Reset Standard, and that'll just knock everything back to normal, back to kind of the starting point. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to import in or a Photoshop file that we made in the last tutorial. So the way that we do this is file, import, and then file. And then you want to find your Photoshop file. So I know that I've saved mine here as PS underscore PBAR. Um, all I'm going to do then is just hit open. Uh, now this next box is, is fairly important. So if you just take a minute to stop and just read uh, the information that's on screen. Most people have a habit of just clicking through OKs and then they get the footage in and it's not the way that they want it to be. Uh, so the way we're going to animate this is we're going to use a composition for it. So basically what this bar is asking us is Photoshop is, uh, After Effects is asking us what way do we want to bring in this Photoshop file and it's saying import kind and then you have a list of options. Um, for this here we're going to bring it in as a composition. Okay. Our next section is to do with layer options. It doesn't really apply for this one. Uh, this tutorial so it's fine to leave it on merge layer styles in the footage but as long as you make sure that this box says composition and then just hit OK. Now you'll notice your project panel is updated but nothing else is really updated uh, and that's because all it's done is it's imported in your file and it's sat in your project waiting for you to work on it. Okay now this is a composition file um, the icon for that is the little foam strip with a couple of little shapes on it there's like a triangle a circle and stuff um, the way that you open these up is you just double click on your composition and then that brings it up to edit. Okay, You'll notice as soon as I double clicked, my composition gets shown here in my preview window and also down the timeline I've now got access to all those layers that I made in Photoshop. So at the end of the last tutorial I told people to delete the background uh, and that's because when we put this on top of some video footage we don't want a solid white background. Just today for animating, we might want to add one in. Okay, so just real quickly, I'm going to show you how to do that. All we're going to do is, while we have, while we've clicked on our timeline here, we just go up to layer. We're going to go new, and we're going to choose solid. Okay, all this is going to do is just make us a big solid layer full of paint. Now, a lot of this will seem similar to Photoshop. It's asking us for the uh, width and the height, what unit we want to use. You can just click make comp size, and that means that it'll match exactly the composition size that you've been working on. Uh, all we're going to do here is click in the box to choose the color and we're going to choose white and then we're just going to hit OK. Now straight away you might think that your composition's been ruined. All that's happened here is if you look down your timeline there's a white solid layer on top of your other layers. Okay, So this works exactly the same as Photoshop. Whatever's on top is what you're going to see first. So all we want to do is just click and drag that white solid layer to the very bottom and now you can see that I can see my p-bar text I can see my black outline okay um, now we're not going to be using that um, today so what we can do is just lock it there's a little underneath the little padlock here we can just lock that layer and that means we can't click on it by mistake and we, we can't make any changes to it so the first thing we need to do is we need to animate the bar uh, draining down uh, from right to left okay now, if, anytime you're on After Effects, if you want to have a look at your layers options, uh, all you need to do is click on the little arrow here beside the title of the layer, and that'll drop down a little section here. Now, if you have any effects on your layers or any kind of added filters, these will be listed here as well. But for now, all we've got is transform. Okay, so I click, now we've got a list of options. So just to show you which layer I'm working on, I'm working on the P bar. So if I turn it off the, the icon, all I'm doing is hiding it. And bring it back so all we're working on is this okay now we go down to the scale section our animation is actually a bit sneaky it's not really hiding anything all we're going to do is we're going to scale this object from 100 percent down to zero percent across the timeline okay um, and the way that we do that is we just scale it okay so we go from 100 down so here's the option that we're going to work with today now if i scale to begin with you'll notice it's scaling in the middle and it's also scaling in the height and width, which is not what we want to do. Okay, uh, and the reason for that is, I'll just zoom in here real quickly, show you. There's a little chain icon 
uh, which if I hold over, it says constrained proportions. Um, and what that means is if I set my width to 90%, then it'll automatically adjust my height to 90%. So it's a really good option for keeping stuff in proportion, but we don't need it for this tutorial. So what we're going to do is just tick that off. Okay. Um, so basically what's going to happen now is you can see when I scale it, it's working a lot better. So it is only scaling in the width. Okay. So your first box is your width. Your second box is your height. But it's still not doing exactly what I want. Instead of it scaling from both sides, I want it to only scale from one side. Okay. So what I'm going to do for that is you can see there's a little icon here in the middle uh, that looks like a little cross hair. And that's your center point. So all I'm going to do is I want to change my center point to be over here. Because at the minute, all my scale and rotate happens around the center point. So if I was going to rotate this, I'll show you just real quickly, it would rotate around that center point. But what I want to do is I want to tell After Effects that its center of the object is actually over here. So that if I scale it, it'll scale just from this side. So the way we do this is we just go to our layer in After Effects. All I want you to do is double click on the name. That'll bring up this this view here so we're only looking at the layer now okay that's all we're looking at and you can see now we can click and drag this little pivot point or this little center point so some people call it an anchor point uh, by default I always end up calling it a center point so we're going to move this little anchor point over here okay just that side and now what happens is we're just going to close out of this layer we're not going to close out of the composition altogether we're just going to stop isolating this layer so we just come up here Click that little X and that brings us back. So you may need to do some readjusting. All you need to do now is just click and drag in your layer and drag it back into space. Now, if you want to be a bit more accurate, you can nudge it with the arrow keys on your keyboard. Okay. So now if I was to scale this, you'll notice it's scaling from one side and that's purely because we changed the pivot point. Okay, that's all that's done. So that's working fine. The next thing we need to do is start animating. Okay, so if you look down here in your layers panel, once we go inside the transform settings, uh, you'll notice a load of little tiny stopwatch icons. Anytime you see a stopwatch in After Effects, it means you can animate that property over time. Okay, uh, the way that you do animation, and this is very fast, it kind of does a lot of the hard work for you. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this little stopwatch, and you'll notice here now in my timeline. A little diamonds appear on zero seconds and what that is is that's a keyframe so it's actually keyframe there at being a hundred percent so all I have to do then is move along my timeline so if I go to say five seconds which is what I want to be working with so if we shift along to five seconds as soon as I make a change now to this property it's going to key in the animation Okay, so as soon as I make a change, you notice straight away that little diamond appears. So what I can do is I can just change this value to zero. And now what After Effects does is it knows what, this is why it's called a keyframe, it knows what the first key position is, it knows what the last key position is, and it's going to do all the tweens for us, so it's going to do all the in-between frames. Okay? So that's real quickly how we get that bar sliding from 100% down to 0%. Okay, these keyframes are very easy to change. You can click and drag them here. So if I didn't want it to take five seconds, I can just drag it along. And then what happens is it's the animation's the same, it's just faster. Okay. So it's just gonna play through faster than it did before. Okay, same again if I want to move it. If you want to get rid of it, guys, you just select it. It's highlighted yellow if it's selected, and you can just push backspace. And then that way when you play through, nothing's happening there. Okay, so it's kind of gone back the back to the way it was at the start. So just to kind of really quickly go through that again, just to make sure you know, once this is pushed in, it automatically puts in the first keyframe. All you do then is move your time on your timeline and just change the value. Okay, and if you change the value, it'll do all the in-betweens for you. Okay, so that's the um, that's a bar draining uh, to begin with. So that looks fine. Remember, we can always change these once we record our footage we can actually change how long this is taken and stuff like that. So um, it's all very kind of very easy to change once we get the animation done. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to animate the opacity. Uh, we're going to make a kind of flash. 
So just show you what the opacity does. The opacity is just kind of the visibility of your layer. So at the minute it's 100%. If I turn it down, it becomes totally transparent. Um, so all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use this little icon down here to zoom in to my timeline a bit. So you notice there's a little mountain range at the minute. I'm zoomed out the whole way. So this isn't zooming in on my preview. It's actually just zooming in on my frame. So I can go down to very frame by frame set um, way of working. And I can start framing. I can start keyframing on individual kind of frames. You can see here my timeline's changed because I zoomed in so much. So basically what I'm going to do is every four frames, I'm going to make it go from 100% opacity down to 0%. The way we do this, again, push in the stopwatch, puts in your first keyframe. So on zero frames, the opacity of this bar is set at 100%. All I do then is go to the fourth frame. I'm going to turn it down to zero. I'm going to go to the eighth frame. I'm going to turn it back up to 100. Okay, and I could keep doing this over and over again if if that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so when I quickly sc scroll through this for you just to show you, starts at 100%, goes to zero, back to 100, back to zero. Okay, so it's real short animation, makes it that easy. Now what I'm going to do now is, I know I want to kind of repeat that animation over and over again. So I'm just going to copy and paste those frames. Uh, so I'm just going to real quickly show you how to copy and paste. Okay, so what you can do is you can click and drag over a series of frames. You select them all. You can actually click them one at a time if you need. You can hold down shift and select them. Okay, so if you want to select more than once, all you do is just click on the first frame, hold down shift, click on the next one. Okay, but for now I'm just going to click and drag a little box of this. And I'm going to just use kind of a traditional copy command just control and C so same if you're working in Microsoft Word or any other word processing software you do the same thing and all I'm going to do now is just move my frame on the frame 16 I'm going to press control and B and what that does is it starts your paste from whatever frame you're on and it just pastes all those frames that you just put in okay So just to show you another way of doing this now is I could actually take all these frames, control and C. I'm just going to zoom in to make sure I can be a, a little bit more accurate with it. So 28, I'm going to move on to the 30 second frame and I can control and B again. Okay, and what that's done is I've taken a bigger selection that time, copied it and then pasted it. So now when I play back, I haven't finished the whole timeline, but if I play back, that's the effect I'm getting. So the bar is flashing. Um, now if you wanted to make it the flash and slow down all you do is drag out the frames as it gets later on Okay So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly using a I'm going to speed up the footage a little bit so you don't have to watch me copy and paste it the whole way through um, And then, then I'll just do a quick wrap-up Okay, so here's our final version. Um, so it's flashing and it's going from zero or from 100 to zero percent. Okay, so the bar is just sliding along. Okay, so just kind of recap what we did there. All we did was import in our file. Just click on file, import, file. We made sure it was set to composition. To open our composition, we just double clicked on the P bar and then we came down into the options here and use a little stop right stopwatch to do the animation okay so in the next tutorial what we'll be doing is working with a piece of video footage um, we're going to focus on kind of getting this dropped on top of the video footage and making sure it kind of looks apart and we might do a little bit of masking okay so same again guys if anyone's got any comments or questions um, or they want to see some different tutorials feel free to um, leave it in the comments section and uh, subscribe okay thanks